Well, believe it or not, April will be here on Tuesday, marking the start of Earth Month. And next Saturday, the American Museum of Natural History will commemorate it with Earth Fest. And this year for Earth Fest, the museum is bringing back identification stations. The fan favorite antiques roadshow style event invites people to bring in their own specimens for scientists to look at and identify. So joining us now is Carl Mailing, the paleontology collection specialist at the American Museum of Natural History. Carl. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. Tell us, first of all, what is going on at the museum next Saturday with these stations? Well, it's a celebration of, of Earth Month, uh, and we're going to have identification stations all of, for uh, various specimens all around the, uh, the museum. And we're going to have uh, uh, events for kids and, and performances all around the museum for the entire day. So the things in front of us, Carl, are, are you telling me that people just had these in their homes <laughs> and brought them to you and said, hey, I'm just, what, is this a branch? <laughs> I mean, right. this is unbelievable. Can yeah. you take us through what some of this uh, sure. all is? Well, none of this is, is from people on identification. Okay, okay, I was just making sure. I was just making sure. It is the kind of thing they do bring in and okay. that we encourage people to bring in. I take care of part of the fossil collection, so that's what I'll be focusing on. But we have stuff from the entomology department, insects, and we have... Um, part of an ostrich egg here. We have, for ornithology, we have all the departments represented by experts who are on hand to identify anything. And we really encourage people to bring in whatever they have at home or that they've acquired um, that has to do with natural history. It might seem ordinary, but we can always tell extraordinary stories about the objects, no matter what they are. It's mm. kind of wild to me because you are all very smart people with so much knowledge to be able to just sort of take a look at a random object and and discern what that is that's that's really something that's what we do and that that is it, it is really really fun I've been doing ID day for decades and I miss it and I'm really excited that it's coming back um, because it's it not only is an opportunity to teach people right in our space but also they get to see what we actually do behind the scenes mm. and when why we're why we love what we do so the smart folks that you have sort of running these stations are they able to pretty much do this, diagnose something, uh, if that's the correct word, immediately? Or do they have to sometimes say, we need to hold on to this to really see where it dates back to, that kind of thing? It's usually immediate because, wow. yeah, fakes or rape reproductions are very easy to tell if you've been looking at these things for a really long time. And all I really have with me is a, a, a high-powered magnifying lens, and I can do 99% of what I need to do just that's where with the that. education comes in. I was going to say, you're not yeah. just Googling, <laughs> taking a picture I, and asking Google I to identify it? I won't necessarily <laughs> rule out pulling out Google to <laughs> verify certain okay. things. You know. All right. Well, so this event dates back to the 70s. What are some of the best discoveries from over the years? It, it tends to be um, a lot of very common fossils. The idea with the fossils, so like, more very common local fossils or things that people might have acquired. But one day in, in 2001, a family came in and put an object on my table in front of me, and I immediately recognized it was part of a walrus skull. What? And when they told me that it was found on a beach in Virginia, that immediately told me it was a fossil because they don't currently live that far south. And I was so excited by it um, that they realized it needed to be with us and they donated it to the collections. You just knew that off of the top of your head that walruses don't normally, aren't normally found? We're nerds. That's what we do. <laughs> I mean, well, uh, this is I a day it. that people can bring something in and benefit from, you call yourselves nerds, but you're the experts in this field. Mm -hmm. Nerds are and, cool. And the yeah. fact that you're, so you could sit at a table with nothing on it, with just a magnifying glass and say, hey, my brain is the biggest tool here. <laughs> Come right. and see what you, what you have, and and I'll. Uh, buy. I think it's cool too that they donated it to the museum yeah. in 2001. Yeah. That's very very rare, and I think a lot of people come with you know a great expectation that they made the find of the century. But it's it's even if it's not, we have plenty we can tell them about why it's still cool. You live for this stuff. Yes, I do. Like. I absolutely do. <laughs> well, uh, Carl, we can't thank you enough. Fascinating stuff. Thank you so much for uh, getting up early and joining us today. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Great to meet you. And uh, Earth Fest and these identification stations. This is all taking place at the American Museum of Natural History starting next Saturday, April 5th at 11 a.m. We'll be right back.